right? Go ahead, Stanislav. Yes, so uh, like initially I was thinking to present just this like paper. Uh, I was looking for something uh, about uh, diffusion models and found this some kind of uh, classic one, but because it's a little bit dense and choppy, I also looked for something more uh, explanatory and found another paper. Uh, and I think they go together like very nice. Mm -hmm. So let's start with uh, original one. So uh, this one, so we're talking about uh, this um, generative unsupervised uh, like variational encoders uh, variation, uh, but using uh, this diffusion mechanism, which is uh, on one hand some kind of interesting and on the other hand, I wouldn't expect it would like produce results, but apparently we have uh, like quite interesting results. And uh, uh, like basic idea of this autoencoder is to, uh, so we have just two paths. One is encoder and another is uh, decoder. And what we are encoding to basically to, uh, to the noise. And uh, then we're trying to um, reconstruct, to decode our noise back to something which has uh, structure. And uh, they're talking about in terms of, uh, so like here we have like my description of, uh, of algorithm where they say we have uh, initial data set, for example, bunch of, uh, like anything could be images, could be sounds, could be anything like text. And uh, we, like usually when we uh, work with uh, encoders, we collapse our uh, dimensionality to something less than original one. And thus trying to extract some kind of meaningful like structure. Here we, uh, encode to particular because uh, like we have uh, some kind of non-parametric distribution of source data and then we uh, like we, uh, like we're not collapsing it we like basically trying to uh, map our distribution to some kind of a parametric distribution in case of this paper they tried to once one uh, gaussian another uh, binomial, but I think it could be any parametric one. Uh, and uh, using again, like stepwise uh, diffusion to Gaussians. So we basically controllably uh, increase our like chaos, like measure of our chaos. We're corrupting, we corrupting images to the uh, distribution we, like which theoretically is tractable. And we use this, uh, like, uh, and also we corrupting it uh, using, um, like, theoretically tractable, uh, again, like Gaussians. We will use this uh, later. And so, yes, uh, so this is, uh, like, step one. Just, uh, I mean, uh, I'm trying to understand the, uh, the problem setup. So, you, you have some kind of uh, training data, and then you're saying you're corrupting the training data. Uh, but do corrupt it, and then and then once you corrupted that, then you train. Yes, or... then like uh, then we like train uh, decoder. So like like we corrupted this data on like very uh, small steps. Oh, oh, this. so so you're saying the encoder itself, mm -hmm. encoder yes. itself is this corruption process or yes. whatever yes. diffusion yes. process? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and and then and then you come to the bottleneck, or do you have a bottleneck there? Uh, it's yes, this is like bottleneck uh, in terms of let me just show this paper. So we have uh, like simple, so we have X, we have our X, uh, like source data, mm -hmm. and bottleneck is Z. Okay, and, and this process of going from X to Z is what you're saying the corruption or whatever, yes, you know, yes, adding the noise. Yes, yes, adding the noise or corruption or in oh, but that one is deterministic, it's not being learned. Um, 
So we use, so uh, they describe two approaches. One is we set these parameters of diffusion uh, as uh, like hyperparameters or, mm -hmm. another, or another modification like learnable. So okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then then, then uh, at, at Z you have some com something completely diffused, right? Yes, so we have uh, diffusion. Uh, they also have this. I can go to some kind of illustration. Yes, so uh -huh. we have so we have original image. Mm -hmm. We on each uh, so we have multiple steps of corruption or adding the noise. And finally, we diffuse it to, you know, like, basically uh, this, like, normal or like Gaussian. Where, where is Z here? Uh, here, like, each next X is basically Z. So this is like original. Our, I see. Data. I and see. Like this is like Z one, Z two. I see, and so, and so the the backwards arrow trying kind of uh, undiffuse it, right? So yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. So, so you are adding no noise one way and then trying to eliminate it the, the other way, right? Mm -hmm. I see. And, and by that we learn uh, like structure of the uh, like of the picture, like trying to controllably uh, like uh, include noise and then uh, like remove this noise, reconstruct an original one. Right. So, mm -hmm. And so they talking, so here we have this like Gaussian uh, a kernel and we basically using like previous, uh, they have a little bit uh, like different notation, but uh, X is uh, the same. Here we have uh, Y like intermediate, but basically this is uh, like same. We have this chain of, uh, of, uh, of Gaussian like corruption. And uh, because we have, so, uh, and they, they describe like forward path, like forward uh, trajectory of the data. So on each, each step from X uh, at the previous, the current, we have our distribution and we go to the, like to big the, and each time we, um, uh, Multiplicate uh, these probability distributions, and we get like Q. And uh, 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 this is modeling distribution. And like modeling, I mean, like so we have our uh, like original, not parametric, like like really strange distribution, and we're trying to squeeze it by adding noise into like noisy, uh, like normal distribution. Mm -hmm. And and P, this is uh, like reverse pass. We're going through uh, from our uh, ideally like Gaussian distribution, so like pure noise, uh, uh, back to our original, like original picture or text or whatever. Uh, and Well, it's not pure noise. If you can reconstruct a picture from it, it cannot be a pure noise. So I think I'm still missing something there. Yeah. So this is yeah, like, like this is high level, and like we go to the second uh, paper to go like step by step. Mm -hmm. So they like they starting with this probability of reconstruction of the like uh, final. So we uh, like get here like from this noise we get here to original one and we have this probability we want to maximize it in general settings is like really difficult like probably uh, uh untractable and here we do series of tricks which are like better explained here so let's <laughs> let's go back to the original case uh so uh they like talking about yes from like uh, sorry and, and this q uh the, the transi transition matrix q or whatever uh Mm -hmm. uh, is is uh, the same for all steps from zero to t, right? Uh, that could be like different. So like uh, no, q I, must be the same. It's the, they, they use the same letter, you know letter. So it might and p has to be the same. Like all the forward and reverse paths, uh, they're like they're like encoder and decoder, right? Yeah. So this like steps of uh, of encoding and like and decoding. So we right. have 
So we have, uh, like, for example, uh, like Q uh, for the first step. Uh, the same Q for, for the second step. Uh, and yeah, so like, like for second, we uh, we use first Q as a source. Mm -hmm. So this like uh, like mark of steps. So we have. No, no, no. I understand that you use uh, output mm -hmm. from the first step yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to the second, but the the function Q uh, is the same. This is conditional probability Q. Um, it's just it's it's described by your net neural network by your encoder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yes. Uh, uh, like generally, it could be different, but for this model, this is the same. The okay, difference sure. is just uh, like uh, just parameters. Right. Uh, uh, like these diffusion parameters. So mm -hmm. th uh, they start with simple. So this is like second more explanatory uh, paper. They start with uh, like simple uh, probability equation, like this um, uh, marginalization of joint probability and like chain rule. And uh, what they want, like where they want to go from there, this is uh, to uh, like evidence uh, like lower bounds. So like we're talking uh, this chain of uh, probability in context of uh, Bayesian equation. So this is some kind of left part. We have uh, like posterior uh, PZ, uh, like conditional X, X is uh, uh, like evidence and uh, uh, marginal distribution, right? Jo marginal equals to joint divided by condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, or like on the other side, we can have this uh, like PZ, uh, uh, like multiplied or uh, uh, conditional PX from Z, but uh, like for starters, they use uh, just, one, uh, just one part. And uh, they come in to use this uh, evidence lower bound uh like they uh declare it here but here they explain how they like instead of optimizing uh this probability distribution like uh this marginal x they want to use uh for uh, like optimization actually for maximization uh, uh this one lower bound so basically this is um uh, expected value of the log of uh, like this division of joint by uh, like by conditional, and here uh, uh, there is a basically they're just saying that we want the two distributions to be as close to each other as possible, right? So, so the one that you started with and the one that you get on the uh, yes. reverse mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. But we have also intermediate step. We also want like a, like final one of the uh, bottleneck. Like supposed to be uh, Gaussian, uh, like this one, uh, this uh, P like conditional Z of X, Z. This is like final Z, so mm -hmm. this is Z on the like bottleneck, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this supposed to be like true Gaussian, and here is our Q in our model. We try to get as close as this ideal one, so they. Uh, so here is their like derivation. So we have first uh, first equation here. Anyway. One thing I don't understand, like uh -huh. uh, you have many uh, um, non-Gaussian distributions, and only uh, you know only few parameters. There are many parameters that would describe non-Gaussian distributions, and then the Gaussian distribution would only describe by mean and variance, right? Uh, and you are saying in your bottleneck, you will have Gaussian distribution. So mm -hmm. obviously you're not going to have enough uh, parameters to specify arbitrary distributions in your input so, algorithm. So just one comment, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so, so I'm not too familiar with this paper, but it seems kind of similar to uh, like standard variational autoencoder story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, Right. Like even this this stuff with evidence lower bound. I mean, I think that's pretty. That's also how the loss function for variational autoencoder is defined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so then variational autoencoder, like we have in the bottleneck, we have a Gaussian distribution essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is just specified by mean and variance. Mm -hmm. So mean and variance contain some information, and and then that is decoded through decoder. 
Mm -hmm. So is it kind of the same story here? It's just like the way encoder works is uh, strange. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, other than, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. so they start. But what happened with all the other information? That's my question, right? So if you only keep mean and variance and there is a lot more, uh, where, where is it all stored? So we have this like multiple layers and uh, all this information is stored there. So basically- what no, 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 but, but given some data from the bottleneck, right? So any, any data from this distribution on the reverse path, presumably will produce an actual image, right? That has, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is very non-Gaussian. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so- so it will have a lot more co complexity than than just the Gaussian distribution. So I, I think I'm missing something. Trivial. Yeah. So yeah, uh, like basically to store all this complexity, we need multiple layers. So uh, 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 like basically in no no to decode, you need multiple layers. And right? encode too. So basically on. But but, but to store it, it is. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, so maybe maybe, like, maybe it makes sense because you are starting in the distribution, even if it is a trivial distribution like flat. Somehow it records mm -hmm. uh, all of the features. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does make sense. Yeah, I'll take it back. Yeah. And this I mean, is even, even if you just look at mean of uh, Gaussian distributions, right? That contains <laughs> some information. Yes, and and distribution, and and, uh, and if we have like many of these uh, uh, distributions, and they are all connected, like. Uh, like dependent uh, on each other. So we store this information on each step. Okay, so maybe the way to think about, let's say you have a complicated function, which is now, of course you can like convert it to the Gaussian by squeezing certain areas and stretching certain areas. And so very complicated shape of the distribution would still be you know, possible to just mm -hmm. describe uh, by Gaussian, given that you can do all the stretches and squeezes. Um, and, and, and then, Basically, that distribution will, will be in the one-to-one -one map with the more complicated one. Uh, and, and that one-to-one -one map is what this encoder and decoders are. Yeah, so basically, if we're talking about these auto-generative models, uh, like, like what we want to do is to, uh, like, not just models, but like generally un 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 unsupervised uh, like learning, we want to use uh, prior information, some elements of this information. To mm -hmm. train this model, uh, like to generalize, like to learn other information, like we don't have. And here we some kind of uh, like looking like keys under the like street light. So we say if we uh, like corrupt our uh, initial data like long enough by small steps, we will go to like pure chaos, uh, like to. Uh, like Gaussian, and that is our like prior information we extract from the input data. But uh, le, uh, le, no, I don't think it's a pure chaos. It's just it looks as chaos. yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah, you yeah. look at the, the probability distribution, it's chaos. But actually, every every given uh, state mm -hmm. of you know z there mm -hmm. corresponds to some very not chaotically looking mm -hmm. image, and so it is just you've taken a complicated probability distribution. And convert it into the very simple one for whatever reasons and then and then all of the information is from that point on is just in the weights and biases of the encoder and uh, uh decoder in the original like paper they have like really nice yeah th like this is uh is not uh, like pure chaos this is like final uh, distribution how they this like swiss roll uh encoded into like gaussian so it's uh, right, but 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 yeah. the information that this Gaussian is actually this wiggly line, uh, curly line is is exactly in those weights of the outcoder mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. uh, decoder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like in general settings, this is exactly as uh, like generic variational uh, encoder. We have this uh, like term uh, phi, which is like vector of all possible parameters so mm -hmm. we're not talking about uh, diffusion yet yeah, like it could be a really large model with millions of billions parameters and we can use uh, like standard like neural ne uh, network and store all this information here so when you say diffusion it's you really mean the that kernel what you called uh conditional probability right you just mean that this kernel has a certain structure to it 
right? The diffusion like st structure, but in general, it is a mark Markov chain that takes you from the mm -hmm. input mm -hmm. uh, to a Z. Uh, what about the backwards path? Now it's not longer diffusion. It should be some kind of anti-diffusion. Uh, yeah, this is like exactly uh, like uh, uh, like kind of um, anti-diffusion. So we basically use uh, previews. Uh, so our like diffusion step and we try to find inverse for anti-diffusion and like we uh, like because we have this really small steps we can linearize and have some kind of uh, the continuity of uh, uh, direct transformation on the uh, like a conjugate step and same step uh, of uh, decoding some kind of uh but hold on uh encoder and decoder are trained separately it's not that one is the inverse of the other i think they could be so so they have the, the reason i ask like, because like if, if they would be the same we do know that uh like anti-diffusion equations are very unstable so you cannot just write anti-diffusion information start solving it mm -hmm. then the high frequency modes will just blow up and then like small numerical instabilities will blow up so that's not going to work. Just just reversing the diffusion equation. But maybe if you are training for those parameters, then then this is kind of handled they, automatically. They have different optimization parameters for uh, uh, those two paths. Mm -hmm. About how they do this, I'm not sure. Maybe this okay. is yeah. Like maybe okay. they uh, they train coder freeze and like train decoder, right. but uh, yeah. like this is uh, like it didn't get you. But like we stuck on uh, on uh, like this step. So uh, like here we just uh, like go on mm -hmm. uh, like pretty trivial things. So like from original marginalization equation, we take like logs from like both sides. We multiply by one, which is uh, like this division. Then we uh, like say like this is like basically definition of expectation so this is sum of the uh like value multiplied by like probability and then we have this like uh, uh like Jensen inequality here in this paper they refer to uh like more like physically like physics like used uh like another name where is it? But uh, but basically, these inequalities uh, are related. So it's like we come like to the same one, like which is like basically says uh, that function from uh, like expected value is greater than expected value of the function, and so we come to this term and we say instead of uh, like optimizing maximizing uh, our like marginal x. Uh, like distribution, we want to uh, like to maximize uh, like this uh, like um, a lower bound. And here they uh, like another approach. They do like basically the same. Uh, same they start with like this equation again. They multiply by log, uh, like and go there. And here they say we see here some kind of intuition. So we have this log. Uh, uh, like distribution uh, consists of again uh, like this uh, lower bound plus the like divergence uh, between two distributions. So we have one is basically our uh, like final one and uh, like uh, like theoretical one that we want to get to. So basically, this is uh, like Gaussian. And here is our learned distribution on the final step. So basically, yes. Mm -hmm. So we want to minimize this term, but that means we want to maximize this term. Mm -hmm. And then they are like basically training this model based on like this idea of uh, like maximizing this and maximizing that. But this is like still variational uh, encoder. We don't have diffusion yet. So this is one step variation uh, encoders they uh, like show here so this is original encoder this is bottleneck this is uh, like back um, reconstruction yes so uh, 
uh, like basically they talking about variation encoders and like two times we have here. So uh, they take this uh, like lower bound use uh, like again our like chain rule and little bit like massage data and we have uh, two like again uh, like, like two terms one is uh, divergence between ideal Gaussian and what we learn and they train to have it like close to zero so these two distributions will be the same and we have this term uh, 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 like this reconstruction and here we like come to the uh, like to reconstruction term when we uh, like basically trained uh, our encoder to represent Gaussian in the end and then we want to train our like second step our uh, decoder to original one so we want to maximize like distribution there and uh, so what is yes. being varied why is it called variational uh, encoder? variational uh, like basically here so we want uh, so uh, in variational uh, encoders like typical approach yes uh, in bottleneck we have uh, like basically normal distribution and uh, uh, we want to like uh, make our uh, like learned distribution uh, like based on like learned parameters like mean and um, like no, I understand you can put yeah. any constraint you want of for the mm -hmm. distribution in the bottleneck what does it make it variational what what is really being varied here uh that's what i'm i'm not sure i understanding variational like uh um... i mean there usually you know variation there's some parameter mm -hmm. right uh you vary it and then mm -hmm. presumably have some quantity yeah, set, so, yeah, so, so that the variation uh, vanishing something like that i don't know yeah so basically we want uh, like we want this uh, like q uh, so this is um, uh, some kind of little bit like not very strong on this part uh, uh, but this idea that um, we want our learned distribution uh, uh, like be close to uh, this Gaussian and we have uh, not the learned ready. distribution but the distribution in the bottleneck you want to be close to the Gaussian the learned one the one you learned can be anything at all it is yeah, 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 like I mean, yeah. So, so yeah, our, it is like, uh, the, the like bookkeeping of the distribution in the bottleneck. In the uh, bottleneck, yes. Yeah, so, that's why you want it to be uh, Gaussian. That I understand, yes. mm -hmm. but is is it like kind of is it the constraint you put in, and because of that constraint, you can set it up as a variational problem? Why does the word variational comes in? That's what I'm missing. So this is like uh, like because we try and uh, to use this like Gaussian. Uh, okay, like so you, think, you think variational like the same as Gaussian at this point? Yeah. I think yes. If like anybody okay. has input, yeah, because like basically it's, it's true that if you use some of the variational principle, uh, like maximum entropy principle, then you may get you know Gaussian distribution out, out of it, uh, and then you can set up as a variational problem. But uh, okay, like right. because this is like not necessarily uh, the only way we want to uh like put constraint to our bottleneck like well, let's say like exactly let's say bottleneck was just a flat distribution yeah. let's say uh flat between you know zero and one that's also a possibility I mean, would you call it a variational out in corner uh if we want to enforce some kind of uh parametric i think it's it, like it will be still uh, like variational but we can, okay so so like i draw different. arbitrary distribution and i uh, and, yeah. uh enforce the condition such that I this is, this is yeah Mm -hmm. okay like, right. like, like because we may not uh not want to enforce any distribution for example we just uh, like compress this bottleneck to like minimal number of parameter and we don't enforce we just want to squeeze everything in and then like try to reconstruct so it will be uh like dimensionality constraint for example right like another way i, do, uh, I, can, I can see why that would be a good idea uh for, for the for the bottleneck uh, uh but um, yeah i think another reason why it may be called uh, variational i think it might just come from this evidence lower bound so you're formulating bayesian inference as an optimization problem basically uh -huh. 
which means that you vary the distribution so that you optimize <laughs> uh, the optimization problem. So it's kind of like, you know, like in quantum mechanics, uh, very variationally solving for ground states or something like that. Okay, have... but, but then maybe uh, what you're saying is that there is a constraint such that uh, when when the signal goes from the input to bottleneck, it to remain a probability distribution. So you want it to remain a probability distribution, and because of that constraint, uh... yeah. In this one, uh, uh, yeah, in this model, like we have this. So basically, uh, like here, this constraint. So we have like original. Uh, so original X, we uh, like use it to uh, to calculate our mean uh, on original distribution, then mm -hmm. to calculate our uh, uh, like dispersion of variance on original mm -hmm. one. Then we use this parameter, some kind of error or like corruption, uh, like coefficient. And then we like calculate uh, like next, like our target, uh, like next Z, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like using original like data. So, so instead of some kind of like neural network, we just uh, all this transformation, uh, we constrain to uh, like this, uh, uh, this variational term. So yeah, that's fine, but that's gonna be like part of the, you know, your loss function. You just constrain the distribution to be mm -hmm. uh, something. Yeah, but uh, uh, like, but for uh, like, I think for variational encoders themselves, this is not necessarily a step. So, uh, like, it could be done this way, or it could be just generic, fully connected net, like whatever we go from step x one to x two. Uh, or, or well, two. even even uh, fully connected, you can make it such that. Uh, uh, it is a mark of chain, right? So you can constrain your transformation matrix to be to have the property of a stochastic matrix, and then. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here, like because we like basically like uh, we abandon this like phi. So instead of having some kind of arb uh, like arbitrary si uh, like size of parameter, we constrain it just to two parameter mean and variance, mm -hmm. and we have uh, this analytical. Uh, equation and this simplifies everything mm -hmm. uh, for like for training for like forward and for backward and here they like go from hierarchical not just one step but uh, like multiple steps so basically and, and just to be clear this bottleneck has a lot of dimensions in it so it's it's a multi-dimensional gaussian distribution Yes, so I, like so it again, has lots of means and lots of variances and lots of uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So we uh, I oh, variances, remember sorry. yeah. Uh, like I don't uh, like I don't remember which uh, like paper probably in this paper they say they in terms of dimensionality they don't squeeze bottleneck. So they have absolutely the same. So we have this uh, like image like ten thousand by ten thousand. And, and bottleneck has the same uh, like dimensionality. They okay, but but that's fine. But then then there is again uh, this uh, mean is mm -hmm. n-dimensional. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and then the covariance matrix is mm -hmm. you yep, know yep, the yep. dimensionality squared. Yep. <clears throat> so yep. okay. Yep. So this, uh, like basically even we squeeze it to mean and uh like variance and still a lot of parameters but sure sure uh, yeah. like they expressed as yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like gaussian and they generalize our original one step out encoder it is uh, hierarchical like multi-step so we have this like z from one to t so basically we're going this from uh, x to z1 z2 and so on so forth mm -hmm. so basically like like typologically the same we uh, like we describe above our so uh, and now like now they're going to our diffusion model so basically here we still have this uh, this term like learnable like parameters could be mm -hmm. anything but here like again we enforce uh, like we enforce uh, yeah so we enforce our like transition from x like t minus one to x uh, xt 
as like again we have uh, like mean and variance and this is analytically like tractable so this is like analytic function we don't use like generic function we just use this uh, like standard uh, transformation and 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 this coefficient there like here it's alpha there it's beta uh, like again it could be like different uh, modification of the model, we may uh, either enforce it as like hyperparameter, like hyperparameter, or we can like learn them. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and then there is a covariance or variance matrix, they call it. Uh, so that means that at each yes. step, mm -hmm. uh, each uh, image is, is being diffused with, mm -hmm. well, first rescaled by that alpha, square root of alpha t and then diffused by this uh, sigma right mm -hmm. yeah so, so they call it like covariance but basically this is like variance because this is like uh, oh so they 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 make each pixel diffuse uh, yeah yeah independently yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah so they uh, like they collect all this information from the image and then uh, like they oh. uh, like they corrupt it uh, but hold on uh I think <laughs> so. So the, the, then, the, then turns out that this diffusion is kind of each pixel, just that you're adding noise to each pixel. Yep, that, yep, yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, okay, what is it good for? <laughs> well, maybe you'll we'll mention on us <laughs> later. Yeah, so uh, like for example, here they show this intermediate state, uh, like in the middle of so we have uh, like original, uh, like this, like picture, and then it's like no, 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 no. Uh, or but you're, that's you're that's, about that's it. different. So so if I would be just diffusing, uh, can you go back to the uh, curly line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I would be diff diffusing each pixel separately, then what would happen? The brightness of each pixel would change, but they would not spread out because of what you showed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there so and the reason they if they do spread out then that it means that there is some kind of uh covariance matrix so there's some correlation uh you know if you are yeah so you can like diffuse to the sides they but I don't think spread that... out. yeah because like as I understand this is just uh, like uh but then the, that just changes the value of which pixel it doesn't yeah mix them yeah, up. yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, if you were uh, white, you will become non-white uh, with the same probability, regardless of how close you're located to blue. And that's not what we see on the pictures. Uh, the whites that are closer to blue are more likely to become blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, something is there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, there has to be some kind of uh, covariance there. Yeah, and probably there is diffusion, some... but it's it's not yeah. clear. Okay. Yes. So here, uh, and again, okay. So uh, they trying to use some equation for hierarchical model. And... Yeah, but maybe coming back to my question, what is it good for? I mean, what is this used for? Um, so um is it so, like makes outing quarter learn you know better because you impose this constraint for each layer to to diffuse uh so basically uh like probably they are using the same approach as uh, like if you want to understand something you have to break something so when you <laughs> <laughs> so <Okay>. uh, <laughs> And uh, like, and then, uh, so we, like, you have this like controllable like breakage or adding noise, and uh, and then using this information because, uh, like, uh, like another path, like backward path, mm -hmm. it's not independent from the forward. Mm -hmm. So like they show it like down there. Yes. So they want like to sing. Uh, so basically, they adding uh, this divergence. Yes. Yeah, so what? Uh, so we have this like term. So we try and on each step, we try trying to minimize our like divergence uh, between step like from like from the depths mm -hmm. like a construction and this 
uh, distraction like from the like top and mm -hmm. we like we try to uh, like teach uh, this uh, decoder to uh, be uh, inverse for this no no i understand that at the end of the day then you can pick arbitrary point in your bottleneck and it should give you some something that looks like real image right so so which was not uh, which you didn't use to, to train for so that i understand but, but i guess my question was what's the advantage of using actually this diffusing kernels so basically you have kernels where, which which take you from one uh to the right yes yeah, so all those steps of q that you have here uh and and you have some uh specified kernels of how um or markov chain matrices of how to go to the right and so maybe that those matrices just have very few parameters and so it's easier to train something like this and i think they're trying to do some kind of linearization because if we have just one step mm -hmm. uh, like like one destruction uh, uh, to bottleneck and another mm -hmm. like reconstruction it will be like highly nonlinear function like uh, transformation hard to like model if you uh, break it in multiple steps one each uh, uh, has really small mm -hmm. uh, like small diffusion mm -hmm. uh, like efficient we basically like linearize we have some kind of like piecewise uh, you know, like imitation of the uh, like complex hyperspace with linearized uh, uh, like fragments i think this is what uh, like what they're trying yeah, to no, but i think the point is really you want to start we have fewer parameters very few parameters and yet gets from the coherent picture to something completely random uh, in a long number of steps uh, the many steps uh, and, and that makes sense but uh, the question is whether this kernel is unique or you can modify it because you know this one is only uh you're adding kind of diffusion like terms mm -hmm. on each step mm -hmm. uh of course you can add higher order terms there uh yeah that, yeah uh you can add uh, you know covariances that we discussed uh, and then this covariance matrix can be arbitrary and uh what are the advantages disadvantages of different uh kernels now i, I guess uh, the advantage because uh like by um uh, they mentioned if we like keep generalization, it's uh, making us really uh, hard, long, or untractable to train. Mm -hmm. We simplify in these like Gaussian steps. Yeah, the fewer parameters, easier to train. Yeah. No, I understand yeah. it, but mm -hmm. again, some maybe theoretical question is missing. Why is this and not some other kernel? There is a lot of different uh, Markov uh, matrices that you can put in there. Uh, why is, is this particular diffusion matrix works better than others? So, um, yeah, like uh, like it's probably <laughs> it's one. My trial and error. Okay, then then it's one answer. Yes, like again, it's like again, uh, like something like looking keys under the like street light. It, like it's easy to work and right, basically right, like right. Yeah. it works. So uh, yeah, yeah, because sense. yeah. Like any other kernel, like I think, or like uh, not parametric thing. Uh, but yeah, let's <laughs> let's go down. What's I mean, there seems to be a lot of theory missing here. Just uh, let's think about all possible transition matrices from you know going to the right, uh, which you describe as conditional Q, right? This is a conditional probability distributions, and yes, you model them as a diffusion uh, term, but there is a lot of other things you can add yeah. to it, mm -hmm. high order terms. And then mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what, what's the right uh, transitional matrix and, and why? That, that's kind of what I'm asking, but okay. Yeah, it yeah, looks like they just use like this approach, this kernel. And, and, and it worked, yeah. And it worked, yeah. yeah. It looks like this is the reason. So Good. like again, uh, they trying to like to massage uh, uh, same equations, uh, like simplifying steps and now they yeah this uh like they uh, like coming to uh like in like inverse so we basically like modeling our uh like reconstruction as inverse of of destruction so basically we have uh like again 
uh, like more theoretical. So we have like this theoretical uh, uh, diffusion and uh, this not parametric we replace with inverse parametric. Yeah, well, that one I have a problem is because I know that anti-diffusion equations uh, don't work. Uh, you have high frequency mode blowing up and then you don't get anything coherent. So so that, that I don't, uh, I, I need to understand why that works here, even if it did. Um, yeah, because you, you know you cannot just write and set diffusion coefficient to be minus diffusion coefficient. Uh, you will be getting something that makes no sense. The really like stressing a thing that we have really tiny like like, like coefficients of diffusion and uh, like in many steps. Looks like this is still. I mean, you, you get, like basically what happens is like tiny uh, fluctuations, like numerical instability blows up. Mm -hmm. uh, any yeah. uh, very small uh, frequency modes, uh, uh, high frequency modes, uh, small scales will blow up. So that's why. Yeah, looks like it would be like really interesting, like paper to take this approach and right. like blow it up and like show yeah. this is yeah. not a very uh, yeah. like uh, like generalizable. Sometimes might right. not work, but so what you can do with anti diffusion, it can like suppress. Uh, certain frequencies like by hand say I do not allow like high frequencies to, mm -hmm. to grow and then you know by hand regardless of what your diffusion equation anti-diffusion equation tells you you just suppress this but but that uh, yeah okay go ahead sorry yeah yeah uh, and uh, like from here like more like generic uh, like equations when they map our like you uh, uh, like to p, they come like again, like a little bit like complicated. Uh, not complicated, but like tedious, uh, like derivation. They come to uh, like again, like using optimization, using all these alphas, which are like efficient. Uh, yeah, it's. On, like on theoretical level, yeah, like you have to like really uh, like to derive it and, uh, and implement like probably this is like level I, I stop understanding. Well, if, if it's uh, the same Markov, uh, Markov uh, matrix that you multiply in each step, then it's very easy for you to know where you're going to get. Um, you just do the eigenvalue decomposition, mm -hmm. this, you know, stochastic matrix. Uh, and that's it. You, just like you solve like Schrodinger equation for all the time, you would do the same. You take initial state, you will project it to the eigen eigenspace of that matrix, mm -hmm. and then you will know exactly where it will end up. So this forward path is is relatively simple. Uh, with a backward path, I'm not so, or or what they call a reverse path, I'm not so. Yeah, so reverse sure. path. But I think this is uh, like what they try. So we have this like Q. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's uh, too complicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and this is, I think, this is uh, like exactly. So we have this, not the forward queue, but uh, our like like backward um, approximation of the queue because mm -hmm. we, like we have this like t uh, like t minus one. So like previous step like conditioned on. Uh, uh, like on deeper one and uh, on original state. So it looks like approximation of the P. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this, <laughs> this is uh, just too much. I think this is, yeah. So. Yeah, that's too complicated. They cannot yeah, be right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but, like, uh, but anyway, so they, uh, in, uh, in this original paper, they, uh, so basically have similar uh, uh, derivation and uh, there is also appendix, but it's less informative than mm -hmm. this one, but if uh, it's it's easy to find uh, like on mm -hmm. uh, what interesting what they show here practical application. So they have original image. Uh, they uh, want to, so they take this uh, Gaussian noise in the middle uh, and they apply the algorithm to uh, this fragment of the image 
uh, on forward pass uh, they mapped back to uh, to gaussian and then they are uh, restored to this way so it's not it's not exactly mm -hmm. uh, like original one but which looks like, like similar so it looks like when we uh, map our original not parametric strange distribution to uh, to Gaussian in the uh, bottleneck and mm -hmm. then we, like we reconstruct we, like we probably map our not parametric again to something more theoretical so basically we uh, may create uh, images in the middle I guess so this is idea mm -hmm. what what this uh, some kind of uh, the stable diffusion imagination yeah. works. So we have like images of the like big wave, images of the cats, and you know, like in the middle, uh, like we create these images of mm -hmm. both ways, and, and like in cats, in more or less uh, like reasonable ways. So. Well, for that, you also have to make sure that uh, pixels on the boundaries are not diffused because uh, you would want to glue your new picture to the. You know this interior square mm -hmm. you want to make sure that the, the boundaries of this is smoothly interpolated somehow and so uh, your diffusion should not probably have like smaller diffusion coefficient at the boundaries or something like that but yeah uh, that yeah. And, yeah and this is like original i think this is uh, like 2015. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so okay. since then you know it was a, a, like a lot of progress so we have Additions. Yeah, we'll have to understand what the progress was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, the, so this, uh, this probably is like what I was able to sure. like, you know, like to get uh, intuition for these figures. Okay. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. Quick question. So it, the picture you just showed, the figure um, with the nos uh, Gaussian noise and the fill-in, mm -hmm. is that so? Is that due to diffusion in the model or? Like, like, what are they trying to show here specifically? Like that, just the model can do it. Because I'm pretty sure, like, without diffusion, something like this could also be done. So I, I guess my question is, like, what is the advantage of diffusion? I'm still kind of lost on that. I guess they just introduced uh, like this. Uh, this method is one of the first papers, and they use uh, like completely like toy. Uh, like problems like here then we have the swiss role we can like diffuse it and uh, and reconstruct something uh like which is uh, like looks like original they uh, use another like toy problem like we have this uh like heartbeats like like pseudo heartbeat things and like we diffuse it and and reconstruct and there they did like demonstration uh what we can do with this bark uh, this bark. So this is just a demonstration of the method, uh, how it could be used to real images, not just with toy. Uh, with toy yeah, but I think Vladimir's question was just like mine. You know, what what's what is it good for? Uh, so, but m maybe is it because it uses fewer parameters? It's faster to learn, train. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in the Nothing paper, like in this yeah. in this paper, they do like have four bullet points on like the advantages um, uh -huh. of their model. So, but it doesn't seem like they explicitly state that it's due to diffusion. So I'm, I'm not too familiar with these models. So that's why I'm right. kind of lost, right. but maybe, maybe it's the, these points like uh, easy multiplication with our distributions. Although I think that's not really due to diffusion. Um, yeah, exactly. But diffusion can be parameterized by few parameters. So maybe that's kind of, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah well it seems like it's also though. like a regularization approach mm -hmm. like a, an alternative regularization like you have dropout you have other uh yep. approaches yep. to regularize I, this I, I like another much, one yeah. but then i would expect them to like compare it to you uh -huh. know other models where have where they have other regularization or no regularization which it doesn't seem like they do that here either so yeah i agree this is this is that was my question right what is, what is it good for yeah. Yeah. Point. So, uh, yeah, looks like they just oh, <laughs> this works and yeah. No, but you you do want to have a comparison. Say, okay, here it is. You know, we have fewer parameters and it works as yeah. good as mm -hmm. with the dropout players or whatever it is. Yeah. In have. the second, yeah, in the second paper, they uh, they do that. Put, okay. Yeah. Uh, they still uh, like don't compare, but they 
highlight this like strong point so we have this uh, like tractable right. analytic uh, like equations and we can train fast and easy then well trackable analytic equations is good for right writing equations but when it comes to the you know practice right uh, if yeah, you're claiming yeah. the diffusion model is better than everything else then you should really say why is it better uh, from you know development point of view yeah, application so they... Yeah, so basically they say like instead of MCMC, we're doing this analytical stuff. And this is mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, other questions? Comments, suggestions? All right, we've had many. Thank Already, you. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stanislav. Mm, sure.